Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with four more projects that I am making for my fall and holiday craft show this year. These are mostly Christmas themed, but you could definitely take these ideas and use them for year round decor. So I really hope you like what I have for you today. With all that being said, let's go. For my first project today, I'm going to be making these signs using wood ornaments from Hobby Lobby. You can see three different choices there. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this using two different signs or frames from Dollar Tree. So these wood ornaments are great. They're laser cut. You get three in a package for $3.99. You can always get them at 40% off. And I'm gonna show you one option using this floating frame and the other one using this wood frame with the wood beads. So these four inch by four inch frames are pretty cool um actually the glass is bigger than that i believe and you can just take the frame apart and between the two pieces of glass they have this piece of paper representing a photograph and you'll just need to probably use some goo gone and a scraper to get that off and then you can put your two pieces of glass back together now with this one you simply lift up the tabs on the back and remove the little insert there from the frame and then you can decorate that however you would like. Now I was going to try to darken up the wood grain look on this frame. If I did it again, I would probably sand around this um, wood looking frame first. You can see the wax is kind of just beading up there it did darken it a little bit, but maybe go ahead and sand around that surface first to make it grab onto that wax a little bit better. Then if you'd like, you can also try and take some of the antique wax and darken up the beads. Again, this might go faster and easier if you just remove that strand of beads from the frame, do your painting or staining, and then attach it back on. But you can see all the different ways you can try this and this is just what I did. And then with the insert there, I'm gonna go ahead and put some Mod Podge on there, a nice thin layer. And then you can see I chose like a light wood grain scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby, spritz a little water on there, and then I'm lining it up in that bottom left corner. And then once we smooth it out, we will set that aside to completely dry. Now I absolutely love these Joy to the World wood ornaments. They have this small ornament size and Hobby Lobby also does have a larger size that I will be using in a future video. I love crimson and moss as my farmhouse kind of country Christmas colors. So I went around and painted all of that leaf garland wreath with moss and then now once that's dry, I'm going to go back in with a small brush and do all the wording with the red chalk paint, which is called Crimson. Now that my backing paper is dry, I'm just using my fingertip knife here to go ahead and cut off that excess. And then once I decide which direction the wood grain is going to go, I just pop that right back into the frame. Now these frames with the beads do also come in white and black right now. This wood color was for fall, but I have seen white and black um, recently. So I did, as you can see with the one I'm holding, I did paint both sides just for a more finished look since this frame is um, clear glass and you will be able to see the back this one that I'm gluing onto the wood frame with the scrap of paper, I did not go ahead and paint the backside of the ornament. So the one on the glass, I did use E6000 to glue that down. This one is just going to be attached on the edges there with some hot glue because it will stand out from the back of the frame. My last step is to take my black and white gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby and work on two small bows here that I will glue at the top to cover up the little hole for the ornament. Everyone wanted to see me actually 
in real time make a bow so I hope that was better I didn't cut anything out that time and you just keep messing with it pulling out the loops tightening it until you get the look and the size of bow that you want last step then is to go ahead and hot glue those little bows right over that hole and here you can see my two different versions of this joy to the world wood ornament like I said, they also have the nativity one and the ornament that says Merry Christmas. So you have lots of options with this project. And I believe I will sell these for $6. If you are stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button and also hit the bell for notifications. If you choose all, YouTube should notify you each time I upload a new video. My second project for today are two different sets of these farmhouse wood cubes. I am using the wood cubes from Dollar Tree. You can use the small images from the back of a calendar. I am using these again from jenniferpugh.com. I'll make sure to put that link in the description. So I decided to do one of my trios with white Waverly chalk paint as the base. And so I'm going to paint the tops and then on each side, like about halfway down, let that dry before we flip them over and do the other side. This second trio of cubes, I wanted to do the Waverly um, Antique Wax Chalk Paint. So you can see I brushed it on the top there and then I'm wiping away the excess. This will give my two sets of cubes just a slightly different look. So go ahead and finish painting and um, waxing those. Here I'm just showing you a couple options of 12 small images you can use. But again, here's the website, jenniferpugh.com. These are on a much thicker paper. This is the artist that did last year, or I guess this year's 2021 farmhouse calendar that had some of these images on them. So you get four sheets, I think for like 12 dot, I can't remember how much it is, but go ahead and check out the link. These are the 12 images I'm going to use for one of my sets. And I am wanting to make these look a little more rustic and farmhouse, so I'm taking some black chalk paint and kind of just sponging around each of the squares, each of the six squares on each cube. And then once I get those painted, I will also sand them a little bit. You can see the edges I sanded. Then we're gonna decide which four images are gonna go on each cube. There are six sides, but on the top and the bottom, I'm just going to do a black and white gingham scrapbook paper. So just a thin layer of Mod Podge, stick your image on your cube, get it centered, rub out any bubbles. You can wait and let that dry first before you put the top layer of Mod Podge, or I just went ahead and did it. Again, it is thicker paper, so it didn't tend to bubble on me like the thin paper of the Dollar Tree calendars. So just go ahead and keep doing that. I did on one cube, I would do two sides, set that cube aside and then go to the next cubes. And then once these two sides were dry, I would come back and do my third and fourth sides. So just take your time, do your Mod Podge, put your image on and then let them dry until you get all 12 images onto your cubes. And that's all there is to it. This set on the right had the antique wax as the base. I did also do the black around the edges and then sanded. And then the ones on the left had the white base with the black. I love how these turned out and I'll probably sell these all for about $8 for a trio. Project number three are some farmhouse candlesticks made out of tumbling tower blocks. I'm also going to use a holiday Christmas bulb necklace, some of the wired garland, and three wood slices. So the base, like I said, of this project are the tumbling tower blocks. So to make all three of my candlesticks, I'm going to make four rows of five blocks, four rows of four blocks, and four rows of three blocks. 
So you can see I'm just lining them up there against my little level ruler and just making sure that they end up being as straight as possible. I've got my four sets of four towards the bottom of the screen and then now I'm gluing sets of five together and then you can see there's four three sets, four five sets, and four four sets. Once those are all dry, I do sand them a little bit just in case any wood glue kind of seeped through the cracks. And then I'm going to paint them on all the sides and the ends with my white chalk paint. There they are, all nice and dried. And then we're gonna glue them together like this. So one is laying flat and then one next to it is on its side. So you can see here's a set of five I'm just putting a little bit of glue there and standing that up right next to the other piece, laying flat, trying to make sure that they're all very level. And then my third and fourth sets of five, I'm going to do the same thing. One's laying flat and the other one is next to it. So we'll do that for our lines of four and three. Now that those are completely dry, you can see I'm going to flip them around to make kind of a, oh, kind of a cube tower, all right? So now I'm putting glue on the two sides that are exposed, and we're going to lay them on top of each other. I think I'll show you the end here so you can kind of see a really tall, skinny tube made out of the tumbling tower blocks. So we end up with one tube that is three blocks high, this tube here is going to be four blocks high, and then the last one we make will be five blocks high. Let those dry completely. Give them a little sanding if any glue seeped through. And you could stop there. They still look pretty rustic, but I decided to add just a little bit of my antique wax, brushing, dry brushing some on wiping away the excess just to make them look nice and worn. Again, this is an optional step, but I then take a little piece of sandpaper just to blend in the antique wax and the paint and get my final rustic look for my candlesticks. Now you can see I'm using wood slices here from Hobby Lobby as my base for my candlesticks and I'm using a combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach each of my tumbling tower block towers to my wood slice. These will be the bases for my candlesticks. Next, I took the Christmas bulb necklace and I spray painted all of the bulbs with gold metallic spray paint. You could leave the bulbs the colors that they are if you'd like. Just for the white candlesticks, I really wanted to do white and gold. So I'm just hot gluing those right into the little space between our tumbling tower blocks. Then I love this um, wired bead garland from Dollar Tree. This happens to be one that was out in the fall but I know they have different colors available for Christmas as well. And I'm just attaching that at the top there and I'm wrapping it around however many blocks tall the candlestick is. So my smallest one, I'm gonna wrap it around three times. And then at the base there, I will go ahead and cut it and hot glue the end there so that it stays in place. And then I will hot glue at the top so that that beaded garland, it's kind of free going around the middle of the stick, but it is hot glued at the top and the bottom, if that makes sense. So there's my small one. And then I'm also going to cover up where that um, the threaded part of the bulb is. We're gonna wrap that around with some jute twine. Again, just another texture in there and to cover up any possible places where the spray paint didn't cover and just give it a little bit more of that farmhouse look.
Then just repeat that process for the other two candlesticks. And this is what my finished trio of candlesticks looks like. I love these. I love that you can make the candlestick part any color you'd like and also use any color of the bulbs to match your decor. And I believe I'll be selling these for $10 a set. If you are enjoying this video and want to see more budget home decor DIY videos, please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel and lets YouTube know that this is content that people want to see. And this last project, I'm going to be making paint stick Christmas trees. You can see on the left, there are some blank ones you can find at Hobby Lobby, but I'm going to make my own using one gallon paint sticks and tumbling tower blocks. So while keeping the package intact, I'm going to cut through these 10 paint sticks right there where the handle starts to go in a little bit. It happened to be right where the sticker was and that is at about nine inches. So this would be a lot faster if you had a table saw, but it is possible with a miter box and a saw. So at my nine inches, you will need three of these pieces to make one Christmas tree. So one of them you're going to mark at two inches so that your pieces will be two inches and seven inches. The second stick you're going to mark at three inches so that your pieces will be three inches and six inches. And the third stick you're going to mark at four inches so your pieces will be four inches and five inches. All right, so you can see here though I'm cutting through three at a time. This is just a quicker way if you're going to be making more than one tree, which I for sure am. So I'm cutting through three sticks at a time. You can see here then as I lay out my pieces, I've got two, three, four, five, six, and seven inches for my different lengths. Here I'm just taking a piece of sandpaper and rubbing the cut edges just to get any loose little slivers of wood and make our pieces as smooth as possible. Now this is going to be another thing that you can totally change up for your preferred decor. I'm going to use crimson red, white and also antique wax coloring for my slats on my little Christmas tree. You can see here I'm going to paint the first one red, the third one red, and then the fifth one red. So basically every other one. I'm going to paint a couple of them white and then that one right in the middle is going to be the antique wax. So we've used three uh, paint sticks to make the pieces of our tree. We're going to use two more and we're going to wood glue them together and then clamp them until they're completely dry. This is just going to give us a nice, thick, sturdy trunk for our tree. So five paint sticks to make one tree. That means with one package for $1, you can make two of these adorable trees. Now that our trunk is completely dried, the wood glue, we're gonna go ahead and use our antique wax again on this, on the front, back, and the edges. I also did paint the back sides of my tree pieces just to make them look more finished. Now in order for our tree to stand, we're going to make some four little um, pairs of tumbling tower blocks. We're gonna glue them together in pairs like this and then we will glue two pairs side by side to make two different pieces for our stand. You'll see that here in a minute. Now that our pieces are dry with their paint, you can, if you choose, use some sandpaper to give them a little bit more of a worn look. I decided that my second and 
wait, one, two, three, four, five, fifth pieces I was going to use some scrapbook paper on. So my top white one's gonna have white and black gingham paper, and my bottom red one is going to have red and black gingham paper again. If you want to add scrap of paper, you can go to Hobby Lobby. There are so many choices of Christmas papers you could add. I encourage you just to go buy a pack of paint sticks and just have fun um, seeing what different combinations you can come up with. So my two pieces that are gonna have scrap of paper, I'm just putting a light layer of Mod Podge right on top of the paint. And then we will spritz that little piece of paper and lay that down on the wood piece until it is completely dried. We'll do that to both of those two pieces that are having scrap of paper on them. I think it just adds a little more character to the tree and makes it not look so flat. So this is another thing that you can do. If you have a Cricut and you can cut vinyl, by all means do that. You could use a paint marker and handwrite your words on your tree. You can use sticker letters that um, you can get at any craft store, even at Dollar Tree, to spell out your words. I am doing a combination of these things. And I'm also going to use a couple of my stencils from a maker studio to show you how you can do that as well. There I was counting how many letters were in the word Christmas, so I knew which letter to go in the middle. I do end up having my word a little too far to the right, but I was able to lift up the word Christmas and get those centered better. I do always recommend putting a light layer of matte finish Mod Podge over any stickers just to keep them stuck down and not peeling off of the project. Especially if you're going to sell something in a craft show, you don't want your project to fall apart after someone takes it home or gives it as a gift. I am going to just hand write the word joy on the very top one. Um, just to show you that as an example as well. I did have some stencils that said joy, but they were all too big to fit on here. You could also use stickers, like I said, or a, um, a vinyl cut word. Now the middle piece there is gonna have the word peace. I decided to use these green stickers, still Christmassy color, and um, pops out a little bit better from that dark wood look. Again, we're using stickers, so we will go ahead and Mod Podge over those just to make sure they stay stuck down. Now my last two, I'm gonna use, like I said, my stencils from a maker studio and the chalk art. On this piece that's just plain red, I'm going to fit perfectly this stencil that says hope and just use the spreader and with this triple mesh, you just press the uh, paint down into the mesh, smooth it out, and then when you lift up your stencil, you're going to have a perfectly stenciled image that was the perfect size to fit on this piece of the tree. All you do then is just take your stencil to the sink and rinse it off with water, let it dry upside down, and it'll be ready to go again. This one, believe, um, a couple of the letters were a little larger, so I kind of angled it a little bit, centered the word believe on this red and black gingham piece, and I'm going to do the same thing with the paint, pressing it in, sorry, I was off camera a little bit, and then peel that off. These are those sets of tumbling tower blocks that we made for our base. I just went ahead with black chalk paint, painted all the sides, top, bottom, front, back, and the sides and we'll let those dry. Now is the fun part of gluing our tree together. Um, I'm just using hot glue because it is wood on wood. These will probably stay just fine or you could use wood glue or something stronger. I just have them all spaced out how I want them, trying to keep them as straight as possible and then just go ahead and assemble your tree.
You can put one of the wood sticker stars from Dollar Tree at the top. I happen to have this in a pack from Hobby Lobby and just glue that to the top. And then you've got your base there. You can see I have the tree sandwiched between the two pieces of the base and it stands perfectly. Then I just like to take a little bit of Christmas greenery or florals and decorate the base there below the tree. So just some little evergreen and then some little berries. You can get all of these types of things at Dollar Tree as well. And I love how this tree turned out. Again, you can make lots of different combinations of colors and wording. I will be making some that are navy blue that say, oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, and some other things like that. And I will be selling these for 10 to $12. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these four projects was your favorite. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye.